Hey folks, it's Matt here with another Critter Clash 2020 pools match. And today we have Winning versus Dashnak on Devil's Island. What a map. What a classic. Back to the good old days we go. So heading into this map, I think everyone knows it, everyone loves it, everyone's played it a hundred thousand times, because it's just gorgeous. Look at that beautiful volcano. After we take so out down the in the... Labs, this Sorry, Rex. Would make for some nice beachfront property. Down in the bottom left, we've got Winning here, who has been doing quite a lot of it so far. Goes for a lot of these late game strategies and seems to pull them off pretty well. And up in the top right, we've got Mr. Muscox, Dashnak Gamer, the Italian Rapscallion. Who, I think, I have a really hard time gauging his skill level because he just keeps Boss. getting better and better at a rate unprecedented. But here we go, some henchman downtime not producing anything right now. Gotta wonder what's up with that. There we go, finally getting another henchman on the go. Winning's probably just gonna be a full henchman ahead of him. Which means that he will be able to get an expansion up earlier, but sending out henchmen at similar times. Marco going straight downstairs for this lot. Now this map is interesting because it's got some asymmetry to it. Top gets this more defensible two expansions here, but... South gets this nice, close, natural expansion that makes a lot of sense, but Mr. Muck Scox expanding all the way down south. There is lots of coal, lots of geysers nearby. Let's see how he's able to make use of that. There are so many geysers on this map, and Top seems to have a bit of an easier access to it. Winning hitting level 2 nice and early, but Mr. Muskox following up and nice and quick, starting to send henchmen down south to staff this expo. Creature Chamber going down nice and early. There goes Winning, finally getting his expansion up and running. But will he pre be prepared for an assault from this side? Let's find out. Third rod coming up from Dashnach, Mr. Muskox, third rod already up and running from Winning. I'm just going to take a moment to appreciate the natural beauty of this map. It, I really, really love it. Map design. Look at this nice big volcano up here, matched with the beautiful giant lake down south. Now let's see, still only sitting on one expansion apiece. A couple units coming out to the east. The Ugibras are gonna match up brilliantly against Prince. Oh, there's the deflect. It's really bad RNG. Oh my good lord, he is just taking so much deflect damage, and this Ugibra has no right to be alive right now. More some Flick Montana's coming out. <laughs> Is that a zebra garden spider? It is indeed a strong unit, zero electricity. That is a value. Go for a very fast three with this. Marco still not taking his kind of natural geyser, but getting this one up over here. And winning got this ocean one and just getting up his natural one as well. That is a lot of Ugabras. That is a lot of value. That is a forward sound beam. Marco probably doesn't have the economy to defend this right now. Looking for another expansion to the north. Not producing henchmen, not producing units at any great speed. A couple coming out here, but are they going to be able to stand up to this force? I do not think so. Nine damage on these bad boys. They are not expensive either. Oh, looks like one's going to get picked off. No, losing focus there. Could have easily turned the tides closer to his favor there. What a good angle of attack from Dashnak, but the sheer numbers coming through from winning here. Easily going to win out the fight. Is he going to pick off another unit? He is indeed actually getting quite a few there with just a handful of Flick Montanas. But here we see, coming up north, another generator from winning. He has so many of those, and it looks like he's searching for this one as well. Marco finally setting up his other mining base, though, so the coal income will slowly start coming into his favor. Research level 3, about matched in pace from both players. The sound beam doing a lot to help defend. And again, these Flick Montana zero electricity, very handy for defense. 
two sound beams coming in clutch. You need, gonna need to start producing more units though, Marco. Uh -oh. Ready, Another henchman coming out over this side, looking for geysers. There's one right up here. But that's okay. Winning, claiming another though. Research clinic from Mr. Muskox here. I wonder if winning is doing the same. Does not look like it. So Marco is actually in a good state economically. Let's see how his level threes can match up to the sound beam wall. Continuing to make princes though. Just a little cheaper. Until he gets his water chamber up, presumably. And a creature chamber going up at home as well. It looks like Marco is not convinced that this base will last much longer. And you can easily see why. Ooh, skirting past these sound beams. I wonder what he's looking for here. Maybe some sort of counterattack. The Spitting Spitons coming out from winning. Now these are a World Cup classic as well. A lot worse than they were there, a lot more electricity, a lot less damage. But still got some bulk, got some speed. Definitely nothing to shake your tail at. These units are just chilling up over here now. They can actually go and assault this generator. Mr. Muskox going for a CC up here. The goblins over up in the north. Definitely something to worry about. But here come the Spythons, I think they're going to crack this base wide open, and there it is, going for the henchmen. That's what you want to be doing. Pulling them off the mining, yep, yeah, Marco, good micro, pulling them back, still producing princes over here. Does he not have a uh, power level 3 range? He's got an air chamber up over here, this could do some damage. But again, this western front, eastern front, it's literally the opposite side. Not looking in great shape for Marco, and winning already looking to expand on his body. Goblins coming out from the north side though, and what are these bunnykins? That's a octopus firefly, I like it. Very expensive, very bulky though, and pretty meaningful damage, and the flash means it will be quite hard to defend, but the anti-air tower is going down in advance. Gotta send those goblins in first, deal a bit of damage. With their low sight radius though, I don't know if you can even see them going up. Keeping his bunnykins back, which is a good idea. The Spython's actually getting picked off by these princes. He actually does get one. Man, what a defense from Marco. This base is still standing strong. He needs to be producing more henchmen though. He needs to get start taking this base. And... Winning, not looking for four just yet. These goblins might do some significant damage. A few bulls here to defend, but if he can pull back to the bunnykins, then he is in great shape, able to take down this expansion. A wonderful job salvaging the resources from that workshop. Here you go, winning. Not really mining from this base over here, and not really producing many units. Got a lot of anti air towers and sound beams built up. Trying to restaff over here, but again, the electricity upgrade. Um, Income from winning, definitely doing him a lot of favors here, keeping him in this game. Marco finally taking this top left base. I don't know if he even knows about this geyser, and he definitely hasn't taken this one. But keeping up mining, looking pretty good right now. Needs to get this henchman back on production. These sound beams have been upgraded, but here comes Bunnykins. With the high defense and regen, they are just going to be able to face tank these sound beams. And you need to see this flash go down. You need those spythons to be blinded. Please, Marco. Please. 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 Oh no. That wasn't very efficient at all. Ah, uh, but the goblins... And a couple princes coming through. Oh, trying to side run by them. Oh no, Marco, the micro failing a little there. A few more goblins coming out. Level four coming out as well, but winning, beating him to the punch, getting ahead. The Spython's able to do a lot of damage, and it looks like this base has finally run out of time. A few princes coming out over here, and more bunnykins. There are no anti-air towers at the main. If Marco could just slide on by there, and will he flash? Will he flash? Please tell me you'll flash. Doesn't look like it, but the army is retreating back to the anti-airs there. Where is Marco looking? I gotta know. A few henchmen coming around, pulling back from the anti-air towers, leaving one sacrificial lamb to distract. 
I really feel like there's a lot more markup we could be doing. There is no defense at the main, and it looks like he's finally going to look at it, and that is actually huge. That could be some significant economic damage. We'll be able to see it coming out. No anti air still going down. Finally, one getting placed, but there are so many units here, and the henchmen are going to start getting picked up. There's the flashes. But there's the level 4 from winning. Dashnak not too far behind, but this southern base finally falling. But he has been mining up here for quite some time now. But he's not got yoke, and winning has had it for quite a while now. Has he? Yeah, he's got it. Uh, things are looking good for winning in the south now. Marco not done yet, though still producing prints. Uh, here comes Chegwin. I'm excited to see what we've got in store. Ah, uh, big scary eel hippo. Definitely a high power unit, but in a hippo range fight, almost no way to outmatch the porcupines. They will just cut through your defenses and make you feel bad for even having hurting. Just combat on both sides. This has been an interesting game so far. This workshop falling, but so many units getting picked off by bunnykins. The upgrades are few and far between. More bunny. Oh no, actually, some cheggers coming out. What is this? This is a condor piranha. Ooh, exciting. 18 damage with pack frenzy. Definitely nothing to complain about. Plenty of chegg wins. Marco groups up all his units here. He may be able to put some sizable dents into winning's front line, but there are so many units on the south here. A good defensive fence coming up from Marco just in case a counterattack comes through. Oh no, the Cheggers are being picked off one by one, but there's so many Cheggwins over here. Unresponsive Cheggwin. What are you doing? And this geyser still has remained untaken for this whole game. Oh, and the fence does not get up in time. Oh, that's huge. Is there any way the checkers, the check wins? They're going in, they're fighting, but most of them aren't actually. A few checkers floating in by porcupines getting picked off, which is good for Marco, but again, these take so much punishment from anything without piercing, almost hitting the defense cap, and Marco's base is in tatters. Is he going to be able to defend? These units are slow. Are they going to make it home in time? Even if they do, Winning's economy is booming right now. He's even going for five. This might be it for Dash Knack Gamer. Lab getting bitten by the spider here. He doesn't even need to use his venomous saliva. Here we go. The unit's coming back to defend, but I think it might be a bit too little too late. Picking off porcupines, the good focus fire, but then now half the Chegwins are completely uninterested. And more porcupines flowing in. There is no way that this force can even compare. Good night, Marco. Great showing at the start of the game. Just a few important mistakes coming through to bite him and winning, able to keep his economy strong. And that will be game. Great job to both players. But there goes the lab. Getting focused down. A few forward chambers from winning. There are a lot of ways that game could have gone better for Marco, but Hey ho, great job to winning. Continuing to do as his name suggests. And hitting five right before the game finishes. Congratulations to winning. If you enjoyed that match, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to play some games, hop into our Discord, link in the description. I imagine a lot of the people who watch this channel are already in there. And if you like what the Tellurian team's doing with this beautiful mod, which I'm kind of biased about, please consider donating to our Patreon. Thanks guys for watching, and good night.